Welcome to Big Time Story Time. I'm Miss Dorothy, and I'm here to read you another book, another long book that you can read today and fill up your day, because this one's going to take some time. This is a small book, but it's a long book. It has a lot of words, and it has a really great story. This book is called Mike Mulligan and His Steam Shovel. Mike Mulligan and His Steam Shovel. This is a really fun book about Mike Mulligan and his big steam shovel and the work that they do and what happens when people stop using steam shovels and start using bigger equipment like excavators. What's going to happen to Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel? We need to find out. We need to get into this long book. It's going to take some time, so I want to jump right in and read it to you. Are you ready for a long story? Good. I need you to sit up and listen up because here we go. Mike Mulligan had a steam shovel, a beautiful red steam shovel. Her name was Mary Ann. Mike Mulligan was very proud of Mary Ann. He always said that she could dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. But he had never been quite sure that this was true. I guess that's Mike standing by that big red steam shovel. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann had been digging together for years and years. Mike Mulligan took such good care of Mary Ann. She never grew old. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who dug the great canals for the big boats to sail through. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who cut through the mountains so that the trains could go through. Wow, they made a really good path for the trains. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who lowered the hills and straightened the curves to make long highways for the automobiles. He dug the path for the roads. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who smoothed out the ground and filled in the holes to make the landing fields for the airplanes. Wow, he even worked on the airport so that the planes could land. And it was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who dug the deep holes for the cellars of the tall sized skyscrapers in the big cities. When people used to stop and watch them, Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann used to dig a little faster and a little better. The more people stopped, the faster and better they dug. Some days they would keep as many as 37 trucks busy taking away the dirt they had dug. See all the people watching them dig that big hole? That makes them want to go even faster. Then along came the new gasoline shovels and the new electric shovels and the new diesel motor shovels and took all the jobs away from all the steam shovels. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann were very sad. Oh no, the new steam shovel, the new shovels came in and they didn't want Mike and his steam shovel anymore. All the other steam sho shovels were being sold for junk or left out in old gravel pits to rust and fall apart. Mike loved Mary Ann. He couldn't do that to her. He had taken such good care of her that she could still dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. At least he thought she could, but he wasn't quite sure. Everywhere they went, the new gas shovels and the new electric shovels and the new diesel motor shovels had all the jobs. No one wanted Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann anymore. Then one day, Mike read in a newspaper that the town of Popperville was going to build a new town hall. We are going to dig the cellar of that town hall, said Mike to Mary Ann, and off they started. They left the canals and the railroads and the highways and the airports and the big cities where no one wanted them anymore and went away out in the country. They crawled along slowly, up the hills and down the hills, 
till they came to the little town of Popperville. When they got there, they found that the select men were just deciding who should dig the cellar for the new town hall. Mike Mulligan spoke to Henry B. Swap, one of the select men. I heard, he said, that you are going to build a new town hall. Marianne and I will dig the cellar for you in just one day. What? said Henry B. Swap. Dig a cellar in a day? It would take a hundred men at least a week to dig a cellar for our new town hall. Sure, said Mike, but Mary Ann can dig as much in a day as a hundred men can dig in a week. Though he had never been quite sure that this was true. Then he added, if we can't do it, you won't have to pay. Henry B. Swap thought that this would be an easy way to get part of the cellar dug for nothing. So he smiled in a rather mean way and gave the job of digging the cellar of the new town hall to Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. They started early in the morning the next morning, just as the sun was coming up. Soon a little boy came along. Do you think you will finish by sundown? He said to Mike Mulligan. Sure, said Mike. If you stay and watch us, we'll always work faster and better when someone is watching us. So the little boy stayed to watch. All right, they started to dig the cellar. I wonder if they can do it in a day. Then Mrs. McGillicuddy, Henry B. Swap, and the town constable came over to see what was happening, and they stayed to watch. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dug a little faster and a little better. This gave the little boy a good idea. He ran off and told the postman with the morning mail, the telegraph boy on his bicycle, the milkman with his cart and horse, the doctor on his way home, and the farmer and his family coming into town for the day. And they all stopped and stayed to watch. That made Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dig a little faster and a little better. They finished the first corner neat and square, but the sun was getting higher. Will, they be, will he be able to get it done in one day? I hope so. Clang, clang, clang! The fire department arrived. They had seen the smoke and thought there was a fire. Then the little boy said, Why don't you stay and watch? So the fire department of Popperville stayed to watch Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. When they heard the fire engine, the children in the school across the street couldn't keep their eyes on their lesson. The teacher called a long recess, and the whole school came out to watch. That made Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dig still faster and still better. They finished the second corner neat and square, but the sun was right up in the top of the sky. Now the girl who answers the telephone called up the next towns of Bangerville and Bopperville and Kipperville and Copperville and told them what was happening in Popperville. All the people came over to see if Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel could dig the cellar in just one day. The more people came, the faster Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dug. But they would have to hurry. They were only halfway through, and the sun was beginning to go down. They finished the third corner, neat and square. Never had Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann had so many people to watch them. Never had they dug so fast and so well. And never had the sun seemed to go down so fast. Hurry, Mike Mulligan, hurry, hurry, shouted the little boy. There's not much more time. Dirt was flying everywhere, and the smoke and steam were so thick that the people could hardly see anything. But listen, bing, bang, crash, slam, louder and louder, faster and faster. Then suddenly, it was quiet. Slowly, the dirt settled down. The smoke and the steam cleared away. And there was the cellar, all finished. Four corners neat and square, four walls straight down, and Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann at the bottom, and the sun was just going down behind the hill. Hooray, shouted the people. Hooray for Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. They have dug the cellar in just one day. 
Look at all the people that came out to watch him. Suddenly, the, the boy, little boy said, How are they going to get out? That's right, said Mrs. McGillicuddy to Henry B. Swap. How is he going to get his steam shovel out? Henry B. Swap didn't answer, but he smiled in a rather mean way. Then everybody said, How are they going to get out? Hi, Mike Mulligan. How are you going to get your steam shovel out? Mike Mulligan looked around at the four square walls and the four square corners, and he said, We've dug so fast and we've done so long that we've quite forgotten to leave a way out. Nothing like this has ever happened to Mike Mulligan and Marianne before, and they didn't know what to do. Nothing like this had ever happened before in Popperville. Everyone started talking at once, and everyone had a different idea, and everybody thought that his idea was the best. They talked, and they talked, and they argued, and they fought till they were worn out, and still no one knew how to get Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann out of the cellar they had dug. Then Henry B. Swap said, The job isn't finished because Mary Ann isn't out of the cellar, so Mike Mulligan won't get paid. And he smiled again in a rather mean way. Now, the little boy who had been keeping very quiet had another good idea. He said, Why couldn't we leave Mary Ann in the cellar and build the new town hall above her? Let her be the furnace for the new town hall, and let Mike Mulligan be the janitor. Then you wouldn't have to buy a new furnish, and we could pay Mike Mulligan for digging the cellar in just one day. That's a really good idea. Why not, said Henry B. Swap, and smiled in a way that was not quite so mean. Why not, said Mrs. McGillicuddy. Why not, said the town constable. Why not, said all the people. So they found a ladder and climbed down into the cellar to ask Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. Why not, said Mike Mulligan. So it was decided and everybody was happy. They built the new town hall right over Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. It was finished before winter. Every day the little boy goes over to see Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and Mrs. McGillicuddy takes him nice hot apple pies. As for Henry B. Swap, he spends most of his time in the cellar of the new town hall, listening to the stories that Mike Mulligan has to tell and smiling in a way that isn't mean at all. Now, when you go to Popperville, be be sure to go down in the cellar of the new town hall. There they'll be, Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann, Mike in his rocking chair and Mary Ann beside him warming up the meetings in the new town That was a good book. I really liked this book. I really liked that the steam shovel got to keep working and then got to be in a place where people got to come see him all the time. Even when people stopped using steam shovels, people still came to see Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. And they were so thankful for all the work he did. That was really important. I liked this book. I hope you liked it too. It was kind of long. It had a lot of words, but that's okay. It kind of filled up our day, didn't it? That's what Big Time Story Time's all about. Now, it's kind of hard for Miss Dorothy to find really long books sometimes. I need your help with that. Do you have a long book that Miss Dorothy can read? Can you tell me what the name of it is? All you got to do is type me a little note right down there and tell Miss Dorothy what name of what book you want me to read on Big Time Story Time. A book that takes a long time to read because that's why we get together on Big Time Story Time. Now Big Time Story Time's over. You need to go off and do something else with your day and you need to think of what book you want me to read. And be sure you subscribe to the channel so you'll always know when it's time for Big Time Story Time. And remember, Miss Dorothy He's always going to be sitting right here waiting to read you that book. So you come back and see me real soon. And while you're off having fun today, obey and obey right away. And I'll see you really, really soon. Bye. Bye.